sweet of blank. Thank you. Yeah. Um, got a lot of commotion. Is Brandy back here? I don't know if it's anything I can do. Okay, let's go to chapter 16 of Matthew, verse 21. So Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get, thee behind, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man. He did, he did not want to uh, believe that the Messiah would come to die. He still believed the Messiah was coming to establish a, a mighty government on earth and that he would be raised up to be uh, in that government. So... Christ says to him, you get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. And then he said, uh, you do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. men. Men don't want a suffering Savior. They don't want to suffer themselves. Right? Right. right. Verse 24, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, if anyone yeah. would follow me, Thinking salvation can be found in me. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a person to gain the whole world yet forfeit his own soul? Or what can a person give in exchange for his soul. For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he'll reward each person according to what he's done. And he said in it said in Luke, he says, If anyone is ashamed of my of me or my words, I will be ashamed of them right. when I come. And, and when we hear this word today, um, if you say, I don't want Christianity to be like that. That's what Paul, that's what Peter was saying. He was ashamed to think that his, his um, Messiah would be a Messiah that died on the cross. That was shameful in the Jewish religion. But Jesus says, if anyone's ashamed of me yes. and my word, I'll be ashamed of you when I come. Amen? Right. Right. Oh God, we just thank you and praise you for your word. Lord, how in the world would we know? How would we know the way? How would we know how to find salvation? How would we know how to live our lives? How would we overcome this world? How would we overcome the devil? How would we make it to heaven? If it were not for you and your word and your truth that we have just read, the very heart of the gospel right here, the very heart of our salvation, and we're so thankful that we're alive one more day, one more day to serve you, to hear your word, to call on your name, to cry out to you, to lean hard on you. Oh, praise you, Lord. We know that you are here right now. We know that you are present. And it is an awesome thing in the midst of a lost world, that you would dwell with your people. You would live in us and move in us and have your being in us. How amazed we are. How amazed. Oh, Lord, how blessed we are. How overwhelmed we are. We give you all the praise and all the glory in your name. Last Sunday, Last Sunday, when we came at 10 o'clock to come to class, to Bible class, we did not know what was going on at that very time. We did not know that Kobe Bryant had already died. 
in a helicopter crash in California. And I didn't know a whole lot about him. But I, I know that uh, that day or the next day, my, my oldest grandson, no, my second oldest grandson posted on Facebook that, this, that he was a huge fan of Kobe Bryant. And at the end of his post, he put, rest in peace. And I assumed that my grandson thought that Kobe Bryant was a Christian. And so I went on the internet and I went searching through um, all the things I could to find out about his life. And I found out he was Catholic. I found out that he had been at Mass that morning, 7 o'clock, before he died. I found out that um, he, had, he was worth $500 million. I found out that he was more than a, than a star. He was a legend. That he's a world-renowned legend. Right. Um, I knew that he was fam a family man. And, but I could not find out that he was a true follower of Jesus Christ. So I wrote on my grandson's post, I made a comment, and I, I put these words. I said, the Bible says in, in Matthew 20, 16, 24, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. Right. And I put that on Facebook. And my grandson responded and he said, well, I don't know if he's a Christian or not, but I see God in his life. And I wanted to say, which God? Yeah. What God did you, did you see? What God do you see in his life? And he didn't, he didn't respond to that. But I want us to understand what the Word of God says today. We better judge according to how the Word judges. That's it. Right. We better draw our conclusions. We may need to make our decisions. We need to live by His Word, not right. by what somebody thinks about somebody. Right, right. Amen? Amen. 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 And so what we learn here in, in Matthew 16.24 is that He's not just speaking here it says he said to his disciples but in Luke and in Mark it says he's called the crowd to him and in Luke it says he said to all the people if anyone would come after me if anyone thinks that, that I am the way of salvation he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me and then it says, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. And so what we see here is that this, this is a universal truth. That no one's going to go to heaven unless they lose their life for Christ. Help me understand. Unless they give up their plans for their life. Unless they turn away from their wishes and their dreams and their desires for Jesus Christ, for Him and His mission. I, I read it and I find no exception to the rule. Right. I find that there's not even one exception right. to the rule. Right. Either we live this life or we don't live this life. There is no, there is no in between life. How many understand that the Bible doesn't is that wishy washy about? about life. But we're told exactly what we need to know in the Bible. What God has, has predetermined. He wanted to save the whole world. But there are conditions. And so there are no exceptions to the rule that anyone that does not give up his life, her life, for the gospel, for Christ, will not go to heaven. How many can understand what the word of God says? Unless we deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Him. Unless we lose this life. Unless we lose this life for Him. Look at the first slide here. It says, whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Anyone that wants to live their life the way they want to live it. Come on, y'all. They're going to lose it. Anyone that lives their life the way they want to live it, come on, right. they're a 
own choices, their own wishes, their own dreams, their own desires, they'll lose it. It will be lost. It will be in hell eternally. Right. But whoever loses their life for me, whoever gives up their life for me and for the gospel will save it. Amen. Anyone, whoever gives up their life for me and for the gospel will save it. Praise God. I love where he says, and for the gospel. Don't you love it? Helps us to understand what this is talking about. Giving up our life for Christ and his mission and his purpose. <laughs> Praise God. Not pursuing our life that we would choose, but yielding that life up totally for him and his mission and his purpose. What is his mission? Right. To save the world. And we have to have that same mission. Come on, y'all. Yeah, we have to have that same mission. So so there's there's no exceptions. Right. Say no exceptions. No exceptions. There's no exceptions, there's no exceptions right. to the rule. Right. This is the rule. This yeah. is the rule right here. Praise God. Wouldn't you rather know the truth yes. right. and live your life to pre be prepared to not know the truth? Yeah. And have other people tell you whatever they think. Well, I'm not letting my grandson tell me what he I'm not, I'm not listening to my I'm not listening to anybody. Come on. Right, right. But God right. and His Word. And so and so we find out that it's a universal truth. And we, we find out that the life, the Christian life, is total surrender. Yes, okay. it is. The Christian life is living a life of total surrender yes. to God. Yeah. Total surrender to Christ. Yes. Denying ourselves, denying our plans, our desires, our whims, our wishes. Right? Right. And then taking up His wishes. Taking up our cross. That's right. Yes. And imitating the life that he lived. And it says in it says in Luke that that we must day we must take up our cross daily, which means that we have to live that life. Right. We can't go through a ceremony at the church. Pastor's gonna have a ceremony, we're gonna take up our cross and then we're gonna go, go home and lay it down. Right. No. 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 We have to take up our cross daily. That's it. A life of total come on y'all. A it. life of total sacrifice. Right. Amen? Amen? A life of sacrifice. A life, a total life of surrender. It, that's, that's what the Bible says. Those are the ones that will make it. Right. Those are the ones. Amen? Amen. I'm glad right. we sang a song, surrounded by His glory, what would yes. my heart feel? Right. I mean, the worst possible scenario on earth ends in the best possible scenario right. in yes. heaven. Amen. But I want us to understand that, that the life of surrender to God is the best life now. It? How can it be? It says whoever wants to lose, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it.
the power of the darkness, He releases us from that. Wow. Amen? Praise God. So He gives us a heart that's not selfish. Amen. 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 He takes away the stony heart. Yes. He gives yes. us a heart of flesh. Praise God. He takes away that woo! He takes away that selfish heart. Amen. Right, right. He takes away that bent toward evil. Right. That bent right. toward sin. Right. Right. And he gives us a new heart. Puts a right spirit in <coughs> us. And so to give ourselves for him is natural. Yeah. Oh, praise God.
Yeah. You go to battle against God, you're going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> so let's surrender now. Amen, yes. Now that the, there's grace. Now there's grace. To walk in all of his ways. Praise God. And to love carrying that cross. To oh, love yes. denying ourselves. Yes. Find joy. Yes. Purpose. Amen. Praise A God, yes. Higher purpose yes. than what you have of your own. Right. The right. greatest purpose you can come up with. The That's greatest right. dream you can come have for your life. It's nothing compared right. to the dream God has. Your job is only to support you in your ministry. 
and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And there he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. And his, so his glory, that he's going to come in this glory, he's not going to look like he did when he was on earth. No. He's going to come in this dazzling, Amen. striking Amen. glory. His face shone like the sun. And his clothes became as white as the light. And just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, two men, two men <coughs> that had lived on earth years, hundreds, thousands of years before they appeared. And it says, it says, and look, they appeared in glory splendor. Yes. They had glorified right. bodies, glorified appearance. How many know that Elijah never died? Right. 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 And Elijah was taken by a chariot. While he was alive, and that Moses' body could never be found, and they thought that that he had also been taken in his body. But they both appeared with bodies. And Peter said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, I'll put up three shelters. One for you, one for Moses, and one for and while he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son. This is my son, right. whom I love. With him I will please listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. So when, what Jesus was doing, he took them, he, he revealed to them that this is the only way. This is the only life that you can live that will make heaven. And so he Tell, he shows himself, he reveals his glory. How I many understand that Jesus was, is God? But they, when they looked at him, they didn't see glory. They didn't see the shining brilliance of his, of his glory, of his divinity. Yes. And so he unveiled that glory. He revealed that glory. Right. Because he said when the, when the Son of Man comes and the Father's glory with his angels, then they'll reward. And they got a glimpse of that glory. How many got a little glimpse today as we were worshiping? A small glimpse. They got a huge glimpse of his glory. Yeah. And, and so yeah. the two people who appeared in glory splendor mean, mean they made it. Yeah. They were glorified. I understand that we're going to get a new body. And it is, it is going to be like his body. And we're going to have the same glory that he has. I mean, understand. Nobody understands. <laughs> it's hard to understand. It's hard, it's hard to understand. You see, Moses and Elijah were two people that laid down their lives. They absolutely laid down their lives. And they did the work of God with no exception. They sacrificed their lives totally for the mission. Amen? Amen. Yes. Two of the many from the Old Testament. They led, led lots and lots of people in the right direction. But a lot of those people turned away. Let me tell you, you better listen. They, might, they think that Elijah, Moses, and Jesus are all equal because <laughs> they appeared with him. And, and so he, they disappeared. Verse 5. And then a, a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. They, how many understand they listened? These two people listened. They listen to the truth. And where do we see them? We see them glorified. We see them the goal of where we're going. Of what we're, what we're living this life for. Are we living this life for the next life? Or are we living this life for this life? How many know we live for this life? We live for the next life. We live this life for the next life. Would, would, you, would you go ahead and give me the other slides, please? First one. No one can serve two masters. Is that true? Right. Yes. Come in, yes. Amen. No one can serve two masters. Either he will.
will hate the one and love the other, yeah. or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Right, right. You cannot serve both God and money. <clears throat> Basically, that's the way the world divides. Some people serve the material, yes, and some people serve the spiritual. Amen? That's right. You cannot serve both. So that's why you cannot serve mammon. You cannot serve money. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. Amen. That's right. Right, right. That's right. Very quickly, I tell you, it's a day in Christianity where people think they can have it all yes, and have yes. Christ too. I, yeah. I didn't think yes. I would live to see this day, right. but I see it all the time. Yeah. Yes. People think they can have God and have what they want to. Right. Right. Says we will either hate the one <coughs> and love the other, or we'll be devoted to the one. We'll choose one. Right. Yeah. We'll exactly. choose one. The next wow. time. Yeah, man. Right. 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 To seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Amen. Seek the mission. Seek his mission. Amen. Seek what Amen. he came to do. <clears throat> and also yes. to live a holy life. All right. Amen. S seek to live a holy life. Every day. How many understand? Yes. Separated from the world. Separated right. from darkness. Amen. Amen. Right. Seek right. it daily. To live that life. Amen. That's righteousness. Amen. Seek his righteousness. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Next one, please. It says, do not offer any parts of your body to sin. All right. As instruments of wickedness. Right. But rather offer yourselves to God. Amen. As those who have been brought from death to life. Amen. Offer every part of your body to Him as instruments of righteousness. Amen. So when you come to Christ, you are delivered yes. from yes. sin. Amen. You are delivered from all, Praise God. Praise all God. of the wickedness. Amen. Praise God. You're actually transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. Yes. Into the kingdom yes. of His beloved Amen. Son. Amen. Amen. And so you should not go back and offer yourself to what you were delivered out of. Amen. 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 You can Amen. do that. You can go Amen. back. Right. But we must not go back. Right. Do not right. offer right. any Amen. of the parts of your body. No, do not offer any part of your life. That's right. No part of your life. Hey. Do not offer any hey. part.
gone through, right. through his death and resurrection. Praise God. I hope, I hope somebody here today that had some plans that were not right could just trash them today.
ways. There's not these Christians and there's these Christians. And they're all going to heaven. Right. Understand if we do not deny ourselves and take up our cross. If we do not live a totally surrendered life. All about him and his kingdom. That's all, all my life is about. Amen. And if your life is about anything else, just don't tell me. Just keep it a secret. See what I mean? If you, if you want some other kind of life, you know, just keep it. No, tell me and I'll pray for you. Amen. I want you to understand that's the only Christian life there is. That's right. That's right. There is no other Christian life. Aren't we glad it's simple? Right. Right. Aren't we glad? Yes. It's right. hard. His way is hard. Yes. yes. Because it's constant self denial, isn't it? Right. Right. It's constantly right. living a crucified life. That's not easy, is it? No, it's not. But any life that's worth living is it's not going to be easy. That's right. Any life yes. that's worth living. Amen. It's Amen. not going to be easy. Well, I, I studied the situation a little bit more about the bread, the crash last Sunday. And I found out that the pilot did three things that contributed to the problem. And that was, number one, he flew in really bad weather. Yes. The, the sheriff county sheriff, I think it was, said that all of their helicopters were grounded. And I don't know if all helicopters were grounded, but this pilot chose to go in bad weather where there was not good visibility. And then the second thing, one of the things, one of the things was that this helicopter was was made in 1991, and in 1991, this, they did not have the terrain monitoring and warning system that let them lets them know when they're near the ground. So we know that they, it was I think twenty five thousand dollars to add that system, something like that to the to this helicopter. He had five hundred million dollars, but did not they did not add this to the to the helicopter. The third thing that happened is that the the pilot decided to to fly manually, and when he saw that it was not good weather, instead of radio radio radioing in that he wanted to fly by instruments and needed help, he didn't do that. And, and what the reason I'm sharing that is because everybody has all these people that seem to know how you should live your life. How many understand? Right, right. That Kobe Bryant had someone else that knew how they ought to fly that day. Right. How many understand? Yeah. Then he relied on this pilot. Yes, yes. How many understand? That we can't rely on any one. How many understand? We cannot rely on some belief system out there. We can't rely on some friend that doesn't know the way. Come on. We can't rely on a preacher who's got a different teaching. How many can rely on anything or anyone but Jesus and what he says? And God said, listen to him. Yes. Listen to him. Amen. You see, as they lost their lives because right. they listened right. to the wrong people. Yes. We will lose our soul. How do you understand? Yes. We will lose our soul. Right. right. If we think we can go about some nominal Christian life and go to heaven. Please, please don't feel that way. Please don't think you can go to heaven. Please don't believe you'll make it. If you live your life the way you want to live it, if you do what you want to do, if you go where you want to go and say what you want to say, no. You have to be totally yielded to Jesus Christ. Amen. Your life has to be totally surrendered to Jesus Christ. And no boyfriend can...
swaying, no husband, no wife, no child, no pastor. Come on, y'all. No one can sway you away from what God says. So a whole lot of people are going to crash in the end. Let's, let's all stand. Lord, we know. We know that any lesser gospel, this church will not even survive. That's right. That's right. You will not continue blessing this church. No, no. If we know the truth yes. and we do not live it. That's right. That's right. We know the day will come when the doors will close. That's right. Because the only reason that we're here yes. is to preach the truth. Yes. Yes. And to live the truth. To be a light in Pauline. That's right. And across Fort Worth. And Lord, I'm not satisfied to be any less than what you called us to be. Right. I'm not satisfied for anything less for us to know or believe or live anything less than what you have said the Christian life is. And it is the only life that's going to make it. That's right. I pray that we would 100 100% believe it today. And we would 100% live it from this day. For if it takes me being on my face for hours a day to break myself in line with your word and your spirit, I am willing. I am willing to live this crucified life no matter what it costs me. And I want those that agree with that to come and, and kneel up at the front. I am willing to live that life no matter what it I have to give up, no matter, no matter what I have to change, no matter what it costs me, I want to live that life. I want you to come. I want you to come. You can kneel around the platform. You can kneel, kneel anywhere you want to. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Others come. I want to live that life. Come. Others come. I want to live that life. I want to live that life that's going to get you to heaven. I don't want anything less. I don't want to play any game. I don't want to lose my soul. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? What, what needs to happen today, ladies? What needs to happen, men? What needs to happen? What needs to change in my life? What needs to change? What needs to change? Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, all the ways oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Anyone else come? Anyone else say, I, I know this is the only life. I know this is the only way. And I'm letting the Lord know it right now. I'm letting the Lord know it. I'm coming down here. I'm coming and joining with those that say, I will live this life. Whatever it costs me. Whatever it costs me. I will live this life. I will not hold on to the world. I will not let the world squeeze me any longer into its mold, making me like it. I refuse to be like the world. I refuse to go the way of the world. I refuse to live that life. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you.